Hello and welcome to week 12 of our like, I don't want to say a mini cut, but I'm just trying to lose like that last few pounds. And um, I'm here to share with you the results from the full 12 weeks, including my weight loss and my measurements. I'm going to share with you the charts so you can see the weight loss trend. And I thought it'd be fun to share with you what I'm doing this Thanksgiving to not gain any weight and stay on track because I have lost weight and I want to keep it off. And that's the whole point, guys. Like, this is a health journey, lifelong health journey. Like, it's not about just lose the weight and then you're done. It's like, I lost the weight, now what do I do, right? So I'm just gonna share with you what I like to do on Thanksgiving to make sure that I still stay on track but enjoy myself. And. Dexter, get up here. He does not let me do a video without needing something. Dexter, come! And I've got to take Taylor to the eye doctor in like 20 minutes. Okay. Anyway, he can stay downstairs. So, let's talk about the results. So, for 12 weeks, I've been trying to lose that last little bit of weight. Like I've mentioned, I don't know exactly how much I needed to lose. I've already lost 60 pounds. And so, and I'll share that video be below if you're interested in learning more about that. But I don't have a number in mind. I was already in like a healthy weight range. It's more like vanity pounds that I wanted to lose. So I never really gave myself a number. I just wanted to lose some weight and just kind of, um, ultimately just look a little better in the bikini, you know? It's okay to have goals like that, guys. Um, from this week, or from last week to this week, I did maintain my weight, nothing changed. I do think it probably went down, but because I only weigh myself once a week now, it may not be as reflective. And so we have talked about that before, all the different reasons that the scale can um, basically deceive you. And if you're interested in like a full video re like dedicated just to the scale and how it works and how to use it properly, let me know, I'd love to share that with you. But ultimately, um, the scale does not always tell the truth. However, I will say when I was, you know, my heavier weights at like 180 for a long time or even at 207, I like I hated when people said, oh, it's not the number that counts, it's blah, blah, blah. Maybe your body wants to say, no. If I am that overweight, it, it, the number does matter. It does. Like, I don't want to be unhealthy. I mean, the more weight you have, the more you are at risk for cardiovascular disease, for cancer, for diabetes, for heart disease. And by the way, heart disease is like the number one killer. And it is like mostly preventable by lifestyle choices. So it, the number matters. But when you get down to, you know, my weight in the 140s, it's like, okay, the number doesn't matter as much because you are healthy. Now it's more about just having like healthy habits. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm not too concerned with the number and I'm not going to be too concerned with the number going forward. I'll just keep using the scale as a tool to like monitor things over time, you know, just to, like keep like a check on it, I guess. But, um, but anyway, so the point is I just, I didn't know exactly how much I wanted to lose, but I have lost over the 12 week period, six pounds. So that averages to be a half a pound per week, which is honestly really good for me. The more weight you have to lose, the more you will lose. And so that one to two pounds would be more normal for me at my earlier stage. But now like I'm good with half a pound, you know? And I also lost one inch on my waist and one inch on my hips. So made my waist to hip ratio a little bit better. And I'm like so happy with that, you know? I feel better, like I even have like a little bit more muscle. You can see the tone and stuff. And so I'm happy with where I'm at. And going forward, I'm just going to do more intuitive eating and just listen to my body. Maybe I'll naturally drop a couple more pounds and maybe I'll naturally gain a couple pounds or maybe I'll just stay the same. I don't know, I'm not gonna to be too concerned about it. I'm just going to continue doing the healthy habits. Because again, like the health journey is for life. This isn't like, oh, I lost weight and now I'm done. Like, no, this is like a full lifelong journey. So I'm gonna share with you my chart. So, this first chart that I'm going to show you is from uh, last year, like over a year ago, actually. And you can see that I had more weight loss at the first part of it because the more weight you have to lose, the more that it comes off. And you can see that there's a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down, but the overall trend is going down. And that's the thing that in the previous years really tripped me up because I hated ever to see it go up. And then I'd be really excited when it went down. It was just such a mind F, you know? And so we don't want to do that. We're going to be so neutral with the scale. This just proves that like it's going to go up and down and that's normal. But over time, it will, like the trend itself will be going down. And then you can see tour I think on the, the, the later part of that chart is that it has um, 
it's more stable. Like the trend down is not as much, but it still is a downward trend. So that just goes to show you that like, it just goes up and down and it really is a journey and just stick with it. Like even if it feels like it's going up, it's not really, it's just, there's so many factors about that dang scale, but it's going down. And then from the last 12 weeks, you can see my uh, chart. And this one's interesting because it's a shorter span. So you can really see the spikes in it. And there was one day where I, started, like, I went up like two pounds and then down like three. Like it was like crazy. Um, but you can still see that there, the trend overall is down. And that's the thing. I really wanted to show that to you guys because it is a trend. Like don't get hyped up when you lose three pounds and don't get defeated when you gain because it might not really be true fat. Like, again, if you are interested in the number scale or a, in, a, in a video about the numbers and the scale, let me know. I would love to share that with you if you are interested. So I'm happy with that. Would you be happy with that? Six pounds in 12 weeks? I mean, it just depends, I guess, on where you're at. But um, I'm happy with that. So let me share with you also how you can stay healthy over Thanksgiving. Do not have to gain weight over Thanksgiving. And there are really three main things that I do to make sure that I stay on track over Thanksgiving and really any holiday. And the first thing is that I get more exercise in. Now, I just did a post today on Instagram, so if you're not following me, definitely do. It's at Rebecca Geiger Holistics, and I am sharing just how uh, to be more proactive and why you should be proactive versus reactive when it comes to the you know indulgences on Thanksgiving. I don't want you to be on Friday waking up feeling like you got to run five miles and hit the gym hard because you overdid it on Thursday, okay? That's different than actually being proactive. That's being reactive. That's having a like a bad mindset about what you did and feeling guilty and ashamed rather than going into Thanksgiving knowing, hey, I'm probably going to eat a few more calories. We don't have to stuff ourselves. We still want to be mindful, which is another thing we'll get to, but you do definitely want to, you know, be prepared to just have a few extra calories. And so you can, um, you know, start your day with a little bit more exercise to put you in that like after burning mode that will get you ready. And I'll talk all about that on Instagram. So go check that post out if you're interested in learning more about that. But basically what we do is we walk five miles every holiday. And now we really actually do that every Sunday. It's kind of been a thing that's evolved over the years because when I first um, started doing this, it was on a Thanksgiving um, where I wanted to do this thing called Turkey Trot. And it was like a 10K downtown, but because we host Thanksgiving, it just took too much time out of our day. Um, by the way, yes, I have always hosted Thanksgiving for about 15 or 16 years. And this is the first year that I'm not hosting 10 or 15 people. It's just gonna be Chris Taylor and myself this year, which is a little bittersweet because we really wanna have people over and we're gonna miss everyone, but we just decided that the best thing for our family this year is to not host. And it's a little bummer, but it's okay because you know what? I am really good at making the best out of a bad situation. And the truth is, the reason that my Thanksgivings came about in the first place was me making the best out of a bad situation. Um, so that's what I do. Dexter is eating stuff off Taylor's lunch plate. That dog. Do you have a dog? Does he do that? He, I train him and he's like so good about like listening when I'm training him, he won't jump up, but he still does it. It's so weird. Anyway, let me get back to it. Um, and so I'm, um, so exercise. So yeah, the first thing is just, we end up just getting a little bit more exercise in that day rather than feeling bad about what we are gonna do because what that ends up doing is actually having you be a little bit more mindful when you're eating, plus you're in the afterburn or after burn. But again, check that out on Instagram if you're interested. Definitely follow me over there because I share things weekly and I do the stories and all that stuff throughout the week. Uh, and just kind of sharing like different recipes and different things and just, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. So just check me out over there. Um, but the second thing that I do is I balance out my starches. So you know Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, we have this fabulous main dish of turkey. I mean, so lean, so delicious, high in protein, like such a great source of protein, lower in calories, but what do we do? We just stuff it, literally. Actually, don't stuff your turkey, but then we stuff ourselves with all these starchy things, which are delicious, right? I mean, mac and cheese and all the different potato casseroles and the, the corn casseroles and green bean casseroles and all the other things and all the treats, which those are all fine, but in just in moderation. So what I like to do is I like to balance out my starches with extra veggies. So what we're doing is roasting an Amish turkey that has never been a frozen, it's gonna be completely fresh. We're gonna roast it in the oven, it's gonna be delicious. 
and we are having mashed potatoes and of course I am making gravy now I'm making a gluten-free gravy and uh, to balance out the mashed potatoes we are going to be making um, red cabbage can you go please I love you but go I'm talking about food making you hungry but uh, I'm gonna make go on boy I'm gonna make like a sweet and sour red cabbage and top it with some goat cheese and pine nuts. That's gonna be super good. It'll balance out the mashed potatoes. Then my sister and I are trading dishes this year. She's making a cornbread casserole that's gonna be dairy-free and gluten-free, and I'm making her a green bean casserole that's gonna be dairy-free and gluten-free. And I was actually gonna make that for myself as well, but I only found one bag of green beans. Sam's has been out of the green beans. I, both Kroger's I went to are out of green beans, so I'm just gonna end up doing greens. So I'm gonna balance the cornbread casserole out actually with greens. I got some Tuscan kale, I'm gonna throw some bacon, some onions in there, and that will be cutting that starch um, so I can balance out having the cornbread casserole with the greens. The other starchy thing that we're gonna make is dressing. So I found a box of gluten-free uh, stuffing mix, which is dressing, because it's gonna go on the side. Again, don't stuff your bird, not sanitary. And um, I also got some turkey stock there, and I'm gonna make my own turkey stock this Thanksgiving too. I do that every year, and I actually use a bone that's in my freezer from last Thanksgiving, and I use the bones from this Thanksgiving, and what I like to do, it's just a tradition of mine, is to basically take last year, combine it with this year, and make new memories. I just have like this spiritual thing with like just, you know, taking the whole year and like just being thankful for it and by me making broth with it, it's just like how I can like thank my last year, if that makes sense, and bring it into the new, even though it's not like a new year, it's just, I don't know, it's like a tradition that I have and I love to do. Um, so anyway, we're going to make that uh, dressing and then to balance that out, we're going to have roasted carrots and I'm gonna make them curry flavored and then I'm going to drizzle honey on them and they're gonna be super delicious. Now I do not actually cook my carrots in honey it's just this Ayurvedic thing that I just um, started doing many years ago where I just do not cook with honey. I will cook with maple syrup and coconut sugar and all kinds of other things. But there's something about honey that I just don't cook because it like cooks out all the health benefits of it. Um, I do let it warm, so I put it in tea and stuff like that and um, I'm gonna put it on the warm carrots. It's not like it can't get warm, it's just, it just, I don't wanna boil it or like overheat it. You know, listen, we all have our things and that's just one of my things. So we're gonna have that. That's gonna be our, our dinner. And then we're going to have a, an apple crisp. Then I'm gonna have a gluten-free topping and I'm going to make it lower in sugar by replacing the sugar that it calls for with monk fruit sweetener. And I'm gonna do the same thing with our pumpkin pie. I'm gonna make that dairy-free by subbing coconut milk and make it, um, well, I was gonna make it gluten-free, but actually I did not find a gluten-free crust. And I don't really feel like making my own. I don't have celiac. I don't have to be 100% gluten-free. I'm just like mostly gluten-free. I just feel better when I don't have that much. Um, so I'm gonna do that with my pumpkin pie and I got a non-dairy whipped cream to go on that. And then, oh, I bought a vanilla bean Halo Top ice cream, just a pint, and we're gonna serve that with the apple crisp. And that's gonna be super delicious. So we're gonna have our desserts, we're gonna have a huge meal. And the key is, which brings me to my third point, the third thing that I do is I am more mindful when I'm eating. I take smaller portions of everything that I want. I only eat the stuff that actually tastes good. Listen, I did post on this a couple days ago, but Anthony's mac and cheese is super dry and it's not even cheesy. Why are you eating it? Like, no, eat something else that's actually good. Eat. That like, um, what are those little things? Um, you see these little cookies with like the Hershey Kiss in the middle of it? Like save your calories for something you actually like, you know? Don't eat it just to have it there. Like, and start with smaller portions, get more of what you like and like leave what you don't. And don't stuff yourself and just like let your body settle and like get more when you're actually hungry. Have leftovers, take a plate home if you want more. Or seriously, you can cook a Thanksgiving dinner anytime. Anytime. If you love your green bean casserole, this is why we actually teach my clients is to make, if you're making a huge dish of it, put it in smaller pans. Like they make these little tartlet dishes and then freeze them. Freeze them, have it later. You don't have to have all the green bean casserole in one day or one week. You can actually have it throughout the year. I'm serious, it's a, a really cool thing to do and you should definitely do it. So anyway, that is what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. Maybe you can do the same and just keep it healthy and keep your goals in mind, you know? Enjoy yourself, but this is not a free-for-all. And here's the thing, if you actually practice balance throughout the year, you wouldn't even think of Thanksgiving as a free-for-all, okay? 
it's possible. I have shown you over the last 12 weeks. I have drank alcohol. I have ate chips. I have had candy. I actually went over my calories many times. Um, and that's okay because that's part of the journey. That's a, how you're actually going to create a true and healthy lifestyle. So you can do it. You can do it. Tell me how your weight loss journey is going. Tell me what your plans are for Thanksgiving. Are you hosting? Are you staying home? Are you traveling? What are you doing? How are you celebrating? And do not forget, I tell you this every time and I'll tell you every time. Go do something good for yourself because you are number one. Do not forget about you. I'm sorry to say this, but the truth needs to be told. If you do not know this already, the only person that is guaranteed to be there for the rest of your life is you. Sorry, not sorry. It's true. So yeah. make yourself a priority. And if you're a priority and you actually take care of yourself, everyone around you is so much better off. I'm telling you the truth. But anyway, I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining me. Check back next week and I'm going to share with you my first week of intuitive eating and I'm probably going to stay off the scale. You know, I'm not so concerned about the number. I just want to just implement these healthy habits. And what I'm going to really do is teach you how to maintain weight now, you know, and I can still be a resource to help you lose weight. Okay. So definitely join me, um, next week and let's see how it goes. Have happy Thanksgiving. Have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.